Hi, and welcome back to Procrastination Baking, where we will bake things instead of doing the other stuff that we really should be doing to live a productive life. Today we're going to be making gluten-free lemingtons. So first up, what we're going to be doing is getting our utensils and our gluten-free self-raising flour, caster sugar, icing sugar, some cocoa, some vanilla extract, and desiccated coconut, plus three eggs. Oh, look at those reflexes. Stop, yep, that's good. And we're gonna need an electric mixer. First up on the steps is to grease your pan. I'm using a 20 by 20 square. This is the perfect size for this recipe. And what I do here is I create one layer on the bottom and then I tuck it in there like a nice little bed for the cake mix. Yep, and I fiddle around with the corners a bit too long as usual. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, cooking spray as a method of attaching another sheet. So this just makes sure that that sponge is not going to stick to the pan at all. You want it slippery. You want it slimy, you want it completely covered. So get in there with another sheet of paper and tuck that in like you're putting to bed a baby. Well, actually you should never probably chuck, don't tuck a baby in like this. Because you're basically squashing them into a pan. Babies shouldn't go in pans. Don't put baby in a pan. I believe that was a quote from Dirty Dancing. Don't put baby in a pan? No. Maybe. Let's just see. We're going to make these corners nice and stiff and then we're going to give it a last spray just so we can be extra slippery. Eventually. Yep, yep, there we go. Oh, no, oh, yep. Mm, spray, spray, spray. Now, in a mixer, we're going to put our three eggs. I'm using extra large eggs. Would you look at that scandal? My feet are naked. How dare I expose myself like this? I should be ashamed. I am ashamed. But back to the baking. Three eggs into your mixer. Then you're going to put your mixer on just to smash those egg babies up. Well, they're not really babies because they're the byproduct of the female chicken. Female chicken? A chicken is a female. And then we're going to put in some vanilla extract. We're going to do one teaspoon. If we can ever get the lid off. There we go. Oh, the muscles. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I use extract, not essence. It's thicker. And I think it tastes better, and you would need probably more in way of extra. Like you can use it if you've got it, but if you have the extract, just use the extract because that's the way I made this recipe. And well, really, who am I to tell you what to do? I'm not your dad. Yep, tap all of that in there, get it all out. All that delicious vanilla now. We're going to shove that back on again and mix that vanilla into the eggs. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Now what we're going to do is, you're not going to do what I do here. You're going to measure out the half a cup of caster sugar and you're going to gradually add it to the eggs while it's mixing. So you want the uh, caster sugar to basically incorporate into the eggs and then to fluff up like a lovely pillow. I think I'm tired, all of this talk of beds. Anywho, so you measure out your half a cup of caster sugar. You can do it in probably a easier method than what I'm doing here, but really, who's to say which is the best method to do this? Martha Stewart, I think it's Martha Stewart. Anyway, 
Yeah, so what we're going to do is you're not going to dump the entire thing in there. You're going to gradually add this in while it's mixing. I, on the other hand, live life on the edge. I'm a rebel. I push the boundaries. I'm now mixing the sugar into the eggs. Now, this process takes a long time. You can choose to do a number of things while this process is taking off. Well, it's not really taking off. If your mixer starts taking off, probably secure it better onto your bench. But I chose to start a puzzle. This is a Harry Potter jigsaw puzzle. And this is how I chose to spend the 10 minutes it took to embed the sugar into the egg mixture. So what I, what I do when I start a puzzle is I sort my pieces. So I am sorting out edge pieces and coloured pieces. Now this is a hologram puzzle. You probably don't need to know this much information about this puzzle but it's what I chose to do. And then we're gonna check on our egg mixture. It's still not really done, but what we can do here, oh, look at that. What you can see there in the background, if you're paying attention, is that my feet are no longer naked. And that's the important thing that we recognize. I'm no longer blight on my family's honor. So you scrape down the sides, put that mixer back on. It's still not ready, so we'll go back to doing some more jigsaw puzzling, probably. This is what you want the consistency to get to. It's light, it's fluffy, it no longer looks like egg. And once it's done, you'll turn it off, and then you're going to start incorporating your gluten-free self-raising flour. We need all up three quarters of a cup of self-raising flour. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to not live on the edge here. We're going to measure it in one quarter cup at a time. And you're gonna sift it because you wanna get rid of any large clumps. No clumps here, no lumps, no humps, no black eyed peas songs. That's what you want to do. So you're going to gently fold in the flour to your beaten egg sugar vanilla mixture. You're going to do it slowly. I sped this up because really I just wanted to look like I was super quick. Here we go. We get some more flour, sift it in, sift, 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 sift. sift. Ooh, look at that speed. Woo! Now fold in that flour. Get it all folded in there. You want to fold it in, but you don't want to knock out any of that air that you've spent the last 10 minutes of your puzzle time beating into those eggs. You beat them well. You egg beater, you. You don't want to then go back and knock all of that air out. So what we do here is this is the last, the third of the quarter cups that you need. Fold that in. Fold, fold, fold. Get it all in there. You want to dig from the bottom and lift the bottom of the filling up to the top and then mix it all in. So you're going to keep doing this until you get to a point where you're comfortable with how much flour is mixed in. If you have any little clumps of flour at the end, it's all right. Um, you can sort of mix them in while you're putting it into the pan, which you'll see me do here. But the key is don't over mix. Don't lay down a track and mix this to the heavens. You don't want to do that. You want to just carefully treat this like your lover. You want to carefully stroke I really need to have some sleep, I think. No, I need a lie. Yep, so we'll just mix all of that flour in if they found any. And then we're gonna put it all in the pan. Here we go. Fill that pan up. Fill it up good. 
get all the batter out of there, scrape down your bowl. We're still being gentle with it, but we're going to get all of those last goody bits out. And then smooth out the top. Smooth out the top. We'll eventually smooth out the top. Yeah, that's yeah, we've got to do now. That's good. Yep, yep. You you've got to stop. You 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 don't need that. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to pop that baby in the oven. It's 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. I'll pop on the screen what Fahrenheit is. But see there, I burnt my finger putting it in the oven. That's just how we work here. And we're gonna go back to our puzzle. We're continuing the sorting out process. It's ironic for Harry Potter, we're doing a sorting process. Oh, the timer's done. Yep, that's right. And we're going to turn that baba around inside of that oven. I don't know why I keep referring to this as a baby, but yep, just check, see if you can see that it's still a little bit squishy when you tap it. Needs another five minutes. Just five minutes, people. You don't want to overcook this thing. Otherwise it would get all dry and no longer be moist. Moist. That's what I said. So pop that back in there for another five minutes while we go back to our puzzle and we find we finally get to start corner pieces. Look at that. It's a Harry Potter puzzle. Yep, this is really important to the baking process. Oh, and our timer is done. So that's another five minutes done. We'll pop that out of the oven. We'll steam up the camera. Yep. And we'll create a lovely lighting effect on the camera lens. And we'll pop this out to cool. So you're basically going to cool it until you can touch the tin without burning your hands off. And we're going to start mixing the icing sugar mixture, which is around three quarters of a cup of cocoa. You, you can choose whatever method you want to get this out of the hellhole container that the cocoa is currently residing in and won't get out of. So pop that. Keep going. Yep, we want to get to a quarter, of, roughly around a quarter of a cup. Now you could use a quarter of a, not, not a quarter of a cup, three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup of cocoa. Now you can choose any method to get it out of there. I chose the slowest and most tedious way possible. Now pop that in there. What you'll see here is I'm also using a cup measure to measure the three quarters of a cup because I'm a rebel. Now put in some boiling hot water. Do not burn yourself. That's just my tip of the day there. Because yeah, you know that I tipped hot water into this bowl and of course promptly drip some onto my hand and burnt my hand but that's fine that just goes along with the cooking so you want to mix all of that cocoa together until you have what effectively is brown liquid no longer any clumpy floury cocoa bits so what we're going to now do is one cup carefully measured at a time into the chocolate mixture. See how carefully we're going to measure this out. Yep, yep. Pat that down. Yeah. A little bit more. Yep. Spill some over there. That's fine. Dump that in. Now mix all of that icing sugar into your chocolate mix. If you spill some icing sugar on the gloves that you've got set aside for the last step of this process, just pop that into your mixture. 
So we're going to mix in that icing sugar and then we're going to continue doing that for roughly around four cups of icing sugar. You basically just test it as you go, see how thick it is, if it looks like it's thick enough to coat the outside of your sponge mix with out it just pouring completely off the side of it. You want it thick enough to stick but you don't want icing like the icing that you would put on a cake. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah, look at that clear. Yep, so I ended up going three and a half cups of icing sugar and that was thick enough for the mixture that I had here. But anywhere between three and a half and four and a half is usually okay to go with. Now we're going to pour out some desiccated coconut. Still don't know why it's called desiccated coconut other than the fact that it's all broken up into little tiny pieces. And we're going to grab our sponge and we're going to get a serrated knife after we, oh yeah, tip here. Use a disposable pan for your um, coconut because then you can just throw the bugger out. You don't need to clean it. And also in your other pan where you're going to put the chocolate covered sponge, Put a bit of baking paper on the bottom of the pan and that way you can throw it out. Look at that beauty. So we're going to cut these up into squares. Whatever size squares that you feel you like. Um, I basically cut it into fourths or quarters and then quartered it again in the opposite direction. Yep, so quarter them down. And here's the key to making a delicious gluten-free lamington. The top of your sponge, it normally wouldn't be a problem, but for the lamington, you want some of that chocolatey goodness to actually absorb into the cake. So if you peel off the top layer of the cake, which is, it should easily just come off. Just like that. Just like peeling, uh, I don't know, whatever you peel. Something that's easily peeled. I was going to go with the skin on a sunburn, but that seems disgusting. So you peel off the top as you go, and then finish cutting all of your pieces. This is riveting, riveting footage here. Now pop on some rubber gloves because this is messy work and what you're going to want is you want one wet hand and one dry hand. That sounds so wrong but you'll get the picture in a minute. So. One hand goes in the chocolate, one hand handles the coconut. This will make sure that you don't end up with a chocolate coconut mess that won't stick to your cake. So lay out your bed of coconut for your incoming cake. Give your chocolate a little bit of a whisk. So you've had your chocolate sitting aside so it's thickened up a little bit, which is where exactly where you want it to be right now. And what we're going to do is we just dip our cake into the chocolate and then we put it onto a rack to drain a little bit. You want them to sit in the chocolate for a little while before you put the coconut on. This will give the cake itself some time to absorb some of that chocolate in. It also means that you can get to see if there's any bits that need more chocolate. 
So I usually do about six pieces at a time. Let's see how good I am. Nope, I went with seven. Ooh, seven pieces. And then you're gonna pop it in the coconut and this is where you change your hands. So in order to not get chocolate all over your coconut hand, pick up some coconut and throw it on top of the piece and then start working the chocolate cake mix around inside of the coconut. And you're gonna put it to the side. You're gonna put down a bed of coconut for it to sit on. This way, you don't end up with one side with less coconut than the other while it's sitting resting. Let it rest. Just let it sit in its coconut bed. Don't bother it. You'll see here that nearly every time I do this, I go to pick it up with the wrong hand but at the last second I always remembered that I had a system in place for a reason yep so finish off coating the rest of the cake bits in chocolate and then continue with your coconut encasement of the cake then once you've got all of your cake pieces covered in the chocolate and the coconut and you're satisfied with the coverage chuck those babies in the fridge for at least a half an hour to an hour before serving and in that time you can clean down the giant mess you've made on your bench and then voila you have yourself some delicious gluten-free lemmingtons and the crowd goes wild. <laughs>